this is where we stopped last time. Uh, so I introduced this Darcy's law and this Darcy's law relates basically discharge velocity, that's V, to the hydraulic gradient through this constant we call hydraulic conductivity. In, in civil engineering, it's more commonly called coefficient of permeability or simply people call this permeability. So that's where we start last time. And the first thing I want to go over today is this uh, discharge velocity. So in this, in this Darcy's, Darcy's law, this velocity, this is called discharge velocity or Darcy's velocity or parent velocity. So there are different names for the same thing. Basically that's the velocity of flow you measure in your experiments. So that's, you can call it like a parent or uh, overall uh, velocity. So this is Darcy's velocity. Velocity. And this velocity V here um, is not the actual flow, the velocity of flow inside soil particles, inside uh, soil specimens. And the actual velocity of water inside the soil, we call that seepage velocity. And the reason we have these two different velocities is because soil is a multi-phase material. So within a soil specimen, within the soil sample, you have particles and you, have, you also have voids in between particles. So what you measure in the physical, in this flow experiment is the discharge. That's the apparent or overall velocity, that's V. And so if you look inside the soil specimen, the uh, water can only flow through those void space. Water cannot flow through solid particles. Uh, so if you recall the weight volume relationship, so we introduce this phase diagram basically. So you can think of soil as uh, basically a composite material consists of voids and solid particles. And if we call the area of void in the cross section A sub V, and then the area of the solids in the intersection A sub S. So this is basically that phase diagram. So we have volume of air and volume over volume of voids and volume of solids. And here we are considering only a unit cross section. So that's why we use area A here. And then the total area. So this is equivalent of that total volume in the phase diagram is V, uh, is A. So if you think of the um, Darcy's experiment, what you measure is this flow rate. So this flow rate equals to Darcy's velocity, or we call discharge velocity V, times the total cross-sectional area A. Okay. So that's basically Darcy's uh, law, in, or Darcy's uh, velocity. And this is equal to the actual velocity of the fluid or the water, we call V sub S, that's seepage velocity, times the corresponding area. And for that, that area is the area of void. So water can only flow through void space. It cannot flow through solids. So the actual cross-sectional area for water to flow through is A sub S or excuse me, A sub V. Okay. So this gives you a relationship between discharge velocity, that's what you measure. So this is This is a velocity you can measure in the experiment. So you can measure how much water flow through over a certain time. You can calculate the discharge velocity. And this is the actual velocity. Okay. So this is that seepage velocity, V sub S. So you can then derive this relationship between discharge velocity and the actual velocity. A sub so, 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 
And this AV is over A, this is void area over total area, or equivalently, it's void volume over total volume, if you consider just the unit width. And this is, by definition, the porosity. That's a definition of porosity. And porosity, we know it's a number between zero and one. Okay. So it's basically the percentage of void space, uh, that's basically a number between zero and one. And this equals two. Okay. So that's a relationship between the uh, discharge velocity you measure in the experiments and the actual velocity of the water. And because n is a number smaller than one, so this v, discharge velocity, is actually smaller than the actual velocity. So just keep that in mind. So. so your discharge velocity is always smaller than the actual velocity of water inside the soil. Just keep that in mind. Okay. All right. And then, um, so I want to focus on this uh, hydraulic conductivity. So in Darcy's law of this parameter k, so this k here, this is a property of soil. So this is a soil property and it describes how water flows through soils. Okay. So first thing, so you need to understand the meaning of smaller and larger k values. If you have soil with larger k values, larger permeability or hydraulic conductivity, it means it's easier for, so for water to flow through. So it's easy. So soil with larger k values, so the, for those soils, it's easier for water uh, to flow through. And then for impermeable soil, so that means soil with very, very uh, low permeability. So you have very small k number. An example of impermeable soil is clay. So clay, remember clays are basic soils with tiny particles. And those clay soil has very, very small permeability. So it's considered impermeable. In the unit of hydraulic conductivity, so if you recall Darcy's law, so if I use that V equals to Ki form, And in Darcy's law, V is discharge velocity, and I is a normalized gradient loss. So it's a dimension, dimensionless number. So permeability has the same unit as velocity. So the unit of permeability or hydraulic conductivity is length over time. So it has a unit of uh, velocity. So some examples. Um, so we'll see. Centimeter per second. Feet per day. So those are some examples. And this K value, because it describes how water flows through soil, it's a property relates to that. So the knowledge of K is required uh, for design of engineering works involving seepage water. Okay. So if you know you're going to dealing with seepage water, you need to know the permeability or hydraulic conductivity of soil. And uh, lastly, so I'm using these two terms interchangeably here, but actually a more accurate description of this term is hydraulic conductivity. So it's a more accurate term or coefficient permeability. And so there's actually another term called K bar. So this hydraulic conductivity. So this is a term um, that is basically related to, I'm going to explain all these terms here. 
So this hydraulic conductivity actually is influenced by the properties of solids and by the properties of fluids. Okay. In, in this expression, this gamma W, that's a unit weight of water. Okay. And oops, excuse me, I'm going to use the same notation. I use eta here instead of u. So this eta term, this is uh, viscosity of the fluid. So here we're considering just water. So it's viscosity of water. And then in this expression, there's a term K bar. It's the absolute or intrinsic permeability. This is, so if you're in civil engineering fields, in geotechnical engineering, for instance, hydraulic conductivity and permeability, these two terms are typically used interchangeably. So when you say permeability, people understand you're talking about hydraulic conductivity and that's that parameter in Darcy's law. So this K bar, this term depends on the matrix or the solid part of the soil only. It doesn't depend on the fluid. And hydraulic conductivity depends on both the fluid and the matrix of solids. Okay. So that's why in this hydraulic conductivity expression here, you see parameters related to both the fluids. So that's the viscosity of water, the unit weight of water, and also relates to the solid matrix part, that's K bar. So this is intrinsic permeability. And then in terms of what affects permeability or hydraulic conductivity, as I mentioned, it's basically, it depends on both solids and fluids. So first, fluid viscosity affects permeability. And fluid viscosity, in this course, we're dealing with only water flow through soil. Then the viscosity of fluids will affect the hydraulic conductivity. And also, because temperature affects viscosity of fluids, so temperature will affect the hydraulic conductivity as well. So we have a table, so I'm going to show that in just a minute. So that gives you the change of viscosity of fluids with temperature, so we have that. And then another important factor is pore size and grain size distribution. So for um, hydraulic conductivity, so if everything else being equal, the smallest particle sizes are the most important. And there are empirical relationships between hydraulic conductivity and grain sizes. And I'll go over those uh, empirical relations uh, in, in the next lecture. And for this particle size, so if I show two soils here, so this is a um, green size log D, and this is percent final. If I give you two soils, A and B, if I give, their, give you their particle size distribution, so that's so we go from large particle to small particle. Okay. So this is soil A. So soil A covers a relatively wide uh, range of sizes. So it's a well, it's most likely well graded soil. And then you have a poorly graded soil. So if you have these two, two soils, even if they have almost the same mean particle size, let's say D50 is the same, uh, when it comes to permeability, so K of soil A, permeability of soil A is smaller than permeability of soil B. And the reason is, so that's what I put here, smallest particle sizes are the most important when it comes to permeability. If you look at the particle size distribution of soil A, Soil A has more smaller particles. So you have this tail here, meaning you have more small particles. And those small particles, they tend to occupy the void space between large particles. And when these void space are occupied by these smaller particles, and it's going to be harder for water to flow through those voids. So that's why everything else being equal, if you have more fine particles, we tend to have smaller permeability, smaller hydraulic conductivity. 
So that's the influence of green size distribution. And then the next one is void ratio. So, so void ratio E, remember void ratio basically measures the amount of voids inside the soil. If you have a denser packing with everything else being equal, that means you have smaller void space. So this leads to smaller K. So again, this is with everything else being equal. You can now compare, uh, say, clays and sands. Even if uh, clays have, tend to have much larger void ratio, it doesn't mean clays are more permeable. This is everything, this is for the same soil. So everything else being equal, so it's the same type of soil. If it's a denser packing, the permeability is lower. So it's harder for water to flow through. And uh, next one is soil saturation. So soil saturation, um, so if you have partially saturated soil, the permeability also is smaller. Okay. So again, this is for same soil. So we're comparing uh, the same soil. Okay. And Darcy's experiments, by the way, uh, is for fully saturated soil. So all of our all of our discussions here are based on fully saturated soil. So that's uh, soil saturation. And last one, uh, this is shapes of voids and the uh, flow path. And this basically, this tortuosity uh, parameter here measures the shape of the void space. So that's for factors affecting permeability. So for uh, this table here, this is hydraulic conductivity values for fully saturated soil. As I mentioned, all of our discussions here are basically for saturated soil. And so this gives you the uh, range of K for different types of soil. So we start from the course on top. So this is course and fine at the bottom. So you, look at, you can look at these ranges and you will realize that fine particles, fine soils, they have much, much smaller permeability. Okay. So notice clay, the permeability is 10 to negative six centimeter per second. So it's much, much smaller compared to gravel and sand. Okay. So K is large for coarse grain soil and small for fine grain soil. And remember, smaller K means it's harder for water to flow through. So that's why clays are uh, treated or considered as impermeable soil. So it's very hard for water to flow through clays. So that's a typical range of um, hydraulic conductivity for saturated soil. And then the next table is that uh, influence of temperature on viscosity. I mentioned viscosity where temperature affects viscosity and that indirectly affects permeability, hydraulic conductivity. So this variation of K, this K value. Um, so this gives you the variation of viscosity at a certain temperature. So eta T is viscosity of water at temperature T over viscosity of water at 20 degree. Okay. So this is this table gives you that ratio. And this K at 20 degrees C is equal to this ratio of viscosity. This ratio again is from table 7.2 times the K value at temperature T. This is how temperature indirectly affects uh, this hydraulic conductivity K. So it's influenced through this viscosity change. Okay. So that is the uh, Darcy's law and hydraulic conductivity. Okay. So that's the first part of this chapter. So those are just basics.